But uh, first, uh, it's time for Royal Watcher with the ex Sun Royal editor and author Charlie Ray. Morning, Charlie. Morning, Kevin. Uh, well, uh, we want to talk about Meghan's uh, legal wrangles, uh, which she seems to be enmeshed in constantly on a 24-7 basis in a second. But suddenly Prince Harry has uh, turned up, declaring war on Silicon Valley, uh, telling high tech titans that they should be motivated by well-being and not just financial incentive. He can talk. Uh, and uh, uh, having a go at social media, yep. blaming social media for the US Capitol riot uh, when that mob uh, attacked the seat of democracy in America and for the destruction of the rainforest. Uh, look, I'm going to be frank with you, uh, Charlie. This guy... Prince Harry, he does not have the intellect to lecture us about all these kind of things. And also, he's from a cosseted background. He doesn't understand what private companies are all about. They're about making money. They're not about well-being. Uh, this is naive nonsense, isn't it? Well, it is naive nonsense. And, and you know, for him to say that it's social media that was behind the riots at Capitol Hill is patently ridiculous. I mean, we all know what happened at Capitol Hill and we all know Trump's involvement in, in that riot. And we all know those lunatics with their guns storming the place. It's got nothing to do with social media. I mean, they, you know, I'm assuming they those people use social media to sort of say, well, we're going to be here, we're going to be doing this and all sorts of things. But that's the problem with social media. It, it allows certain things that we shouldn't be seeing or going on to happen. But we've got to be careful with it. We've got to take care and look at it. But, you know, Harry and Meghan have decided that they don't want to be on social media. Well, fine, go away. Just stop talking about it then. I'm really not interested in what he says about it, you know. It's well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, uh, you know, they talk about the pernicious and toxic effect yeah. of social media, as you say, you know, or as Harry implies that they think it stirs up all sorts of social trouble, is negative uh, and is all about making money. Uh, whereas, of course, Harry and Meghan, they're not about making money at all. <laughs> um, uh, but, uh, you know, the real reason these two have come off social media is not because of any of that, if you ask me. It's because they got a hard time on social media loads and loads of people uh, gave them short shrift and told them what they th thought about their grubby little money making venture in California and they didn't like it they don't like being called names do they that's what it no, amounts to they no, want they to be adored and they cannot take criticism but to be to be fair I, I mean like all of it we've all suffered from from uh, lunatics on social media you have and I have oh, it, yeah. as well Certainly nowhere as near as, as bad as they They've had some particularly really nasty things said to them and about them on social media. But that's the whole point of social media, not to say those nasty things. It's where you can openly criticise and agree or disagree with various points of view. And you can do it in a reasonable and civilised fashion. Um, you know, I don't know what Harry wants, uh, you know, anymore. He's come off social media uh, and, as you quite rightly say, he's showing a very lack of understanding of how company big companies work when they're out to make to make money I, I do agree with them that maybe those companies should be doing a little bit more to control if you remember when we used to be in newspapers right at the beginning we used to get the lunatics right to us we always knew they were lunatics because they used to write to us in green ink well now <laughs> now they're now they're, now they're doing it on social media yeah. uh, and we need to it was easy for us in those days we just took the letter and threw it in the bin well there needs to be some sort of throwing in the technological bin somewhere or other with with these type of people yeah and uh, you know to be honest with you they should grow up uh, yeah. you know you get called nasty names on twitter or facebook i mean so what so what? I mean, who cares? Uh, but to those two, I think uh, they they love to be adored and they hate the idea of being disliked. And that's what they were getting on Twitter. And he, needs, Facebook. he needs to remember that old adage: sticks and stones will break my bones, yeah. but names will never hurt me. Just get grow up here, Harry. Yeah, and please, 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 Harry, do not lecture us uh, about the awfulness of companies uh, that want to make money. Because uh, <laughs> what the hell are you and Meghan doing right now? Nakedly, blatantly Recently, shamelessly uh, using your royal titles to make a, a shed load of cash. You know, it really is hypocrisy at its worst. Uh, and it's, it's interesting, Kevin, just on the, that, 
you know, one of the things about members of the royal family is that they don't get embroiled in these sort of controversies. You know, and Harry has now broken away and he's getting himself embroiled in practically every controversy that's going. You know, you would never get the Queen or Prince uh, Charles or Prince William, you know, making comments about what happened at Capitol Hill. It, it just would not happen. Yeah. Uh, last uh, I heard, Spotify and Netflix uh, were pretty much digital companies uh, yeah. but based in uh, uh, Silicon Valley. And uh, uh, they don't mind uh, taking a bit of money uh, from those companies, do they? Nope. Uh, to the tune not of to the tune of about one hundred and forty million dollars. So do not lecture us about making money and the awfulness of that, Harry. When you are nakedly and blatantly and shamelessly making money out of digital companies, it really is hypocritical. And uh, I've had enough of it, to be honest with you. Let's uh, move uh, back across this side of the Atlantic and Meghan's eternal, ongoing legal wrangle. Uh, this week she was in court or her lawyers were in court in, in Britain in London uh, arguing that her case her privacy case uh, she says the mail on Sunday invaded her privacy by publishing a letter from her dad Thomas Markle uh, and that it's an open and shut case it doesn't need to go to court uh, they just need to find in favour of her uh, the judge is uh, making his decision on that but uh, I suspect that if he decided yes I'll award this case to Megan uh, then the Mail on Sunday would immediately appeal very, very angrily. And he knows that. Uh, yeah. So uh, the, her contention that she had her privacy invaded by the Mail on Sunday, it has to be heard in court, doesn't it? It cannot be summarily closed down in the manner that she would like. I cannot see how on earth that she can escape this a full court case, which will happen in October. Uh, and by the way, the judge has said that he's hoping to have a, a decision on this particular issue, whether it's um, a summary judgment or not, uh, within about two weeks. So we don't have that long that, that long to wait, uh, really. But it's interesting in the two days, we've had quite a bit of extra information that, that's come out of this case. Uh, and in particular, um, there is a letter from four former members of the um, of the Sussexes, uh, now dubbed the Palace Four, as we tend to do in tabloid business, um, <laughs> saying that they don't want to take sides in this issue. But however, uh, if they are called upon to give evidence in court, they will give evidence, and they have some light to shed. Their phrase, not mine, some light to shed on the letter that was written by Meghan to Thomas Markle, which is at the centre of this whole controversy. Now. I'm, I don't know what they're going to say, whether they're going to say, yes, we did help write the letter or no, we didn't help write the letter. We'll have to wait and see. But the lawyers for the mail are very keen that these four should be given, you know, the uh, opportunity on behalf of, of the of the mail, if necessary, to say in court what exactly they know about that letter and who wrote it, because the accusation is that uh, Megan uh, used a member of the palace staff to help frame that letter that went to Thomas which Markle. Means, which means it's not private. Yeah, that four, which means that, that it's four, not private. As many as four courtier, courtiers are said to have, uh, alleged to have helped to write that letter. Therefore, it becomes less private. Uh, well, she yeah. also, she has so far claimed it was a uh, a letter from a loving daughter to her dad. Uh, her dad is going to shoot that down, I suspect, in a well, documentary he, he, he's planning to make. Well, he's also said in in his affidavit to the Mail on Sunday that in the letter she never once said that he uh, that she loved him, and the reason why uh, he's gone to the Mail on Sunday with that letter is let's not forget is that five anonymous friends went to People magazine to basically pour a bucket load over him, and so he was not a happy bunny, and then released that re released that letter. So it cannot be private. And of course, you've got the issue of whether she cooperated with Omid Scobie and Carolyn Durant on finding freedom. Uh, but she, she said, said she didn't, didn't, and then changed her mind. Didn't, but then changed her mind because she has given one of her friends permission to speak to Omid Scobie and Carolyn Durant. So we've got all these great issues in the background that's going on. So it's going to be very interesting for Mr. Justice Warby to, you know, decide what to do. You know, 
people like you and I will be keeping our fingers crossed that we have a whole court case, Mitch. Well, I think we will, Chad. I mean, you know, whatever she says, uh, about droning on about privacy, uh, she loves to be centre stage and she should get ready to be centre stage in a London court in October. That case, uh, I think, is going to happen. I don't think her, yep, her I bid to, to close this case down is going to be successful. Uh, but uh, we await that decision with bated breath. As always, another fantastic Royal Report. Thank you so much, Charlie. That's Charlie Ray, uh, former Sun Royal editor and Royal author. I'm Kevin O'Sullivan and this is Talk Radio.